Hello everybody. Um, so today, since we're still here, um, we're going to be doing um, our temporary supervisor out of Teatro Grotesco. Um, I don't know why I try to do like a thing on that, like a accent, if you will. Okay, so anyway, um, the our temporary supervisor, um, this is another story um, about, or roughly about, um, the Quine organization, or QORG. And the story is about this dude who is a factory worker who um, never thought that he would always be a factory worker. He had um, higher hopes for his life, um, but they were very vague and he didn't know what they would be. And he's writing his account of what went on at this factory to what it what seems like a reporter on the other side of the border. And um, he talks about how um, the Quine organization um, controls so much stuff, like the medical, the pharmaceutical, um, the pharmacies where you get your pills filled, um, all of the um, establishments where you can find employment in this city, um, to where it's almost like it is a country in and of itself. Um, so there's that. And he's talking about how it's very reminiscent of the last story, um, but also reminiscent um, to an extent of the Red Tower. Um, it's just completely foggy all the time. And there's just this one story concrete block building. And every day he goes in there and stands at his little spot and um, he connects um, small pieces of metal together. And that metal comes from some other factory somewhere, brought in, and then they connect these pieces together. And then another truck comes and takes those pieces away to some other factory somewhere else. And the way he talks about it, it's almost as if the job he has of connecting these metal pieces aren't really to make anything in particular. He doesn't know, like, what the bigger product is that he's helping construct. And it might just be, like, I get the feeling that it's just a thing for them to do. Like, it, it doesn't even matter. It's not to build anything. It's just to keep these people occupied. And everyone in the town is on this tons of medication um, from QORG to make their life as dreadful as it is something that they could live through. And um, there's also pills they could take to help them sleep. Um, because when they're sleeping, they're not thinking. Because um, when he... There is a part in the story where he can't sleep and he starts thinking, where did these metal pieces come from? And what are they for? And did they, I mean, they came from out of the ground and then they went somewhere to be made into these metal pieces. And so he starts thinking about all this shit. And the point of it is, is that thinking about this is not good. Um, it doesn't help anything. It's irrelevant where these pieces came from what they're being put together for. It's just, that's what he does. He connects small pieces of metal to make larger pieces of metal. Um, that's not even what the story's about. I haven't even got to that yet. So the story is about 
how one day his supervisor came out and said, um, I need to go um, to headquarters, and so there's going to be another supervisor here for a little bit, a temporary supervisor. And everyone's like, oh, okay, whatever, weird. Um, and then the next day when they come in, <clears throat> behind the frosted glass of the supervisor's little office, they think they see something in there, but they can't be sure. And when they start like thinking about what it could be, it's not like they're like, oh, I can make out the shape of the supervisor. It's... There is a head thing and um, an arm protrusion. Like, it's very... Um, it's so vague that it doesn't even look like a person, really. It has person-type traits, but they can't make heads or tails of it. And everyone's really tripped out by it. And so as they're working, they're like kind of looking at one another like, what the, what the fuck is in there? And this one guy, who was probably one of the younger dudes, the whole day was just keeping his head down, doing stuff. He wasn't talking, he wasn't um, like getting involved in the conspiracy that all these people were thinking was going on. And then right before, um, like, after lunch, he just snapped. And he, like, ran into the um, supervisor's office and slammed the door behind him. And then it looked like he was trying to run away. And, like, there were, like, it looked like there were, like, bugs flying around him and um, all this shit. And it was just, like, total chaos. And then he comes out and he just, like, looks, like, shocked. And the doors kind of open, but everyone was kind of afraid to look into the door to see what was in there. And then the door slowly shut. And then when the latch turned to lock it, it like woke the dude up and he took off running. And then suddenly um, the bell sounded to for the end of the workday, even though it wasn't time for the end of the workday. So everyone left, and um, apparently everyone had a hard night sleeping, and he got up really early and went to this diner that he knew would be open. And when he got in there, everyone from work was there, and he was like, oh. So he sits down, and one of the dudes next to him is like, oh, did you hear about the dude? He's dead. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, um, all his pills were open, and he probably overdosed. And um, the narrator's like, well, I almost did the same thing trying to get to sleep last night. And the guy sitting next to him was like, yeah, I don't know if that's really what happened or not. So they go to the warehouse to start their work day. And there's some new guy there. And he's jamming. And he's just like putting stuff together super fast. And everyone's like, wow, he's he's found a new way to connect these pieces of metal so they all start adopting this guy's new way <clears throat> who won't really talk to them they don't know where the fuck he's from they just know he's a virtuoso at putting these little pieces of metal together so they all start doing it and they're all like kicking ass and they notice that he's not taking the breaks like the scheduled breaks so they stop taking their scheduled breaks. And then when lunchtime comes, he's putting stuff together more slowly, but eating with one hand and putting stuff together. So then everyone else starts doing it. And then they realize that um, they're working much later than normal before the bell rings telling them they could go home. And he stops the guy outside and he's like, look, dude, like, where are you from? I don't understand what's going on. And he's like, are you wanting to cause trouble? Because I don't want to cause trouble. And he's like, no. And he's like, what are you going to do? Report me? And he's like, oh, they don't have to, we don't have to report people anymore. Like, they're past that. Like, the Q org has come up with different ways. And he's like, what's going on? And he's like, you know, like the Quine organization is constantly refining how they do things to be, um, 
more, oh man, this always happens at 10 minutes, um, to be more um, productive. And this is just another one of those things, you know, but um, I would appreciate it if we never talked about this again. And so the dude's, like, going nuts, okay? The, there's still, like, this weird entity inside the um, supervisor's office. He's like, I'm going to resign. Even though if I resign, I will have no money and there's no other job I could get. Um, I just, I can't do this anymore. So he goes to a payphone, calls the corporate office, because he's not going to fucking go into the supervisor's office to resign. And he's like, yeah, I want to resign. And the lady's like, oh, well, we're not accepting resignations at this time. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, no, I want to resign. And she's like, oh, well, let me transfer you to our temporary supervisor. And he starts freaking out. And then when the phone finally picks up on the other end, it's just this, like, growl, this weird noise that he could, like, feel going through his body, up his arms, into his brain. And he freaks out, hangs up. And just doesn't go back to work. And as he's like sleeping, just these screams that he heard on the other end of the phone just like fill his brain and he can't handle it anymore. So he thinks like, well, I might as well go see if I could get my job back. And so he goes back to the factory and realizes that his spot on the floor is still open. So instead of talking to anybody, he just walks up and starts putting little pieces of metal together. And the new guy is like, welcome back. I told the supervisor that you would be back. And the supervisor is the old supervisor. The temporary supervisor is gone. But the new supervisor is, um, or the old supervisor now has a lot of the characteristics of the temporary supervisor. And it got to the point where um, they just kept extending the work days to the point where um, you might be able to go home for a couple hours. And some guys even just started sleeping on the floor at the warehouse. And they gave you new drugs to help fight off sleepiness and stuff like that. And um, along with not accepting resignations any longer, they weren't accepting retirement any longer. So everyone there knew that they were just going to work there every day until they died and their death was their retirement. And um, the guy who's writing this letter to the journalist is like, I don't know how old I am anymore. I don't know how many years I've been here. But I know I've been here a long time and I know I'm not going to be able to go anywhere until I'm dead. And this story filled me with such fucking dread. It was like, um, I don't know. I can't explain it. Like I, I just like got up and started, I went for a little walk and like, it's just terrifying. And this world that Ligotti has created is so similar to what actually fucking goes on in real life that it's shocking. Like, you can sugarcoat and paint corporate America any way you want. And this story is what that is. And, um, it's just fucking terrifying. Um, I think it's terrifying for me because I've never been able to be a normal person and have a normal job and do normal things. So to me, this hits a lot crazier because it, it makes me feel like I kind of dodged a bullet, but at the same time there's this like lurking fear, you know, that, um, right around the corner, that's what life's like. And I'm just kind of on the outskirts looking through the windows of the warehouse and other people who have been in this life like this, who've been working the same job for 15 years or something like that 
probably see the horror of this story in a completely different manner and could probably look at this story and go, oh man, I remember that time we had a temporary supervisor and it was just like that to an extent, you know? Um, and it's just, uh, it's like, what's the fucking point, right? Um, it's just terrifying. So this was, um, another great horrific tale. Um, somebody was talking about, I can't remember who it was in the comments on one of the other, um, Teatro videos saying how, like, the way Ligotti repeats himself, like, kind of adds to the horror of something because he'll just find, like, little phrases and the phrases, especially when they come from people like this in the story, it's like almost like brainwashed ideals. Like, um, I didn't intend on working there long. I had higher hopes for my life, even though they were vague hopes. Like, he says that like three or four times in the story. And um, it just kind of sinks it in that like... I don't know, like, if you don't have, like, a definite plan to escape, you're never going to get out. And um, I think this story, like, works on that level, but it works on that level with a lot of different things. So anyway, um, that is our temporary manager. Um, I'm fucking wrecked right now after reading it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I need to eat some chocolate or watch Spongebob or something. Like, I feel like I need a palate cleanser. So, um, I'm going to go make some more coffee and take all my pills so I could be a productive member of society. All right, so I will talk to you guys later. Let me know down below what you think. Bye-bye.